Today we're gonna to create this cool cave waterfall composite image with four different photos here in Photoshop. And if you wanna follow along with this exact photo that we're gonna to create today, then make sure to download all of the photos down in the description below. Now today's composite is actually a ton of fun to create and it's pretty straightforward actually. There's not a lot of complicated things going on. So even if you're relatively new to this type of editing, you'll definitely find some success with this edit. Okay, so here in Photoshop, we're gonna start by creating a new project and the project that I'm going to create is 2000 by 2500 pixels at a 180 pixels per inch resolution. I'm going to click create and now we are here in Photoshop. It's time to get started. Okay, so once you download the photos that are down in the description below, if you haven't done so already, you will find yourself with this little folder here with four different images. Now the first image that we're going to add to our composite is this waterfall photo like so. Just drag and drop that onto your canvas to add it in there. Now with this waterfall placed, I'm gonna rename this layer to waterfall and then I'm gonna right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object so then this way we can scale scale it without losing any quality. So now I'll grab the move tool by pressing V and I'm gonna shuffle this over to the side and then I'm also going to just stretch out the waterfall by holding the shift key and then I'm gonna position it so the waterfall just looks significantly taller because we don't really wanna see the river flowing over, otherwise it sort of makes it feel a little bit smaller. So stretching it out just makes it look like this massive canyon. With that in place, we'll press the check mark and we're ready to add our second image to the composite. The next photo that we'll add to this image is our cliffs. Just drag and drop that in there like so. And what we want to do is actually cut out these cliffs from these background ones because we're gonna use these as a side of our canyon. So first, just like the waterfall, I'm gonna right click on the image and go to convert to smart object and then I'm gonna just call this to cliff wall. And then now I'll grab the quick selection tool and I'm just gonna paint around the edge of the cliff or basically everywhere that I do not want to select. So in this case, this looks good to me. I'm going around the edge of the cliff. Now if you have areas that have been missed, just simply paint over those like so and then if you need to subtract from your selection, just hold Alt or Option and you can subtract from the quick selection tool. Now, if you're new to this tool, make sure to check out my other tutorial that you can find up in the corner right now, sharing the best ways to cut out images in Photoshop. So once your selection is active, like so, we're gonna add it to a layer mask. So with that cliff wall layer selected, I'm going to add a layer mask and now that selection is automatically applied. This is the opposite of what we want. So with that layer mask selected, we'll press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask. And now we have our cliffs without the background. Since I want these cliffs to fill in this area over here, we need to flip them around and then stretch them vertically. So pressing Command or Control T, right click and go to flip horizontal. That's gonna move the cliffs to the other side of the photo. Now I'll grab my move tool, hold the shift key, and then just drag up like so on both ends just to stretch out our cliffs. And I'm gonna position them somewhere over here like so. And then you can even try to squish them up a little bit if needed. So that looks pretty good to me right in there. Once again, just holding the shift key to squish my photo. So with all of that looking good, I'll press the check mark to commit to that. And yes, there are some things that we need to blend, but what I like to do is just get everything in position first and then go back through and do the blending afterwards. So now that we have that cliff in position, we are now gonna go add a sort of cave roof part over here. Going back to your image folder, dragging and dropping this image into your project, we're going to select this upper part of the cave. So once again, grabbing the quick selection tool, this time I'm just gonna paint over the dark part of the cliff here, like so. And then I'm going to add that to a layer mask and now we just have that cliff selected. I'll press Command or Control T, right click and go to flip horizontal. And now that cliff is on the other side of our photo. So I can now just position this up here and then hold the shift key and stretch it down a bit like so maybe wiggle it over there so it's not taking up so much room in the image. Now looking at the edge of the cliff, you notice there's this blue, which is just a little bit of fringing left over. So we can quickly touch that up just by double clicking on the layer mask. And then in this case, I have my view set to on black and then 100% opacity so you can easily see those edges. And then I'm just going to shift the edge inwards a little bit like so. And that does a really nice job to quickly remove that fringing or you can also just increase the smoothness, increase the feather, increase the contrast, and then that does a nice job to also remove that fringing as well. I'm gonna then output to new layer with layer mask, click okay, 
and then I'm going to delete my original layer. So now I only have my updated layer with no fringing. I'll call this to cliff roof. Last but not least, we now have to go add our subject into this photo. So going back to our image folder, dragging and dropping our subject into there like so. First, we're going to cut out the background from this image. So I'm going to select the object selection tool. If you're not using Photoshop 2020 or newer, then you'll have to use something like the quick selection tool instead. But I'm gonna just click and drag out like so. Photoshop will make an automatic selection of my subject for me. I'll add that to a layer mask, and that looks pretty good to me. Now zooming in here, you notice that he's missing a hand and things like that. So we're gonna touch up this layer mask really quickly using the brush tool. So pressing B to access the brush tool, making sure that white is set to my foreground color. I'm just gonna go and add back his hand like so. And then with a relatively hard brush, around 75% there, I'm just gonna then switch my foreground color to black. And then I can just paint out that leftover area around his hand. And then that will just give us a good cutout for our image. Now, once you're happy with the hand, I'm just going to continue to go along the outside of his body here just to remove any excess fringing with the brush tool, just painting with a black brush on the layer mask. This is just a quick and easy way to remove any fringing that might be left over in your images. Once you're happy with your layer mask, I'm gonna right click on that image and go to convert to smart object. That's gonna hide our layer mask, but if you double click on the smart object, you'll be able to reaccess that layer mask. So then you can still edit your subject. But like I said before, using the smart object will allow you to scale without losing quality of your layer. I'm gonna just rename this to person and then now grab my move tool and just position him somewhere more suited in my frame. I'll hold the shift key just to scale him up a little bit and then position them around here somewhere. Now I'll press Command or Control T, right click and go to perspective. And then I'll just drag up this corner like so, and then drag down this corner a little bit, just so it gives it the look like he's standing up and we're not looking up or down at him. It just feels a little bit more straight on. And then I'll just go back to scale, hold the shift key and just shift this over. And that looks good to me there. Now I need to just extend out this grass a little bit. So I'm gonna grab my marquee tool by pressing M on my keyboard, go and select that area like so. With my person layer selected, I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate it. So now I have that little piece on a new layer and I'm just gonna grab the move tool, hold the shift key and then just shift and drag over like so. And then on my person smart object, I'll just add a layer mask and then mask out the grass behind there like so. And then now we've just extended that bottom so that it fills in the rest of our image. Shift click both of those, press Command or Control G to group them, and I'll call this to person. Then I might just bump this down a little bit so then we can see a little bit more of our waterfall. And I'm just using the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge my image into position here. So that looks great to me right there. And now we have the baseline of our edit put together. So. The first thing that we need to do is start by blending our cliffs to the waterfall. So let's do that first. Since the person layer actually covers up the bottom of the cliffs there, we don't have to do any blending down here. Saves us a little bit of time. However, since these colors do not match whatsoever, we're gonna click on the cliff wall layer, add a hue saturation adjustment layer, create a clipping mask so it only affects the cliff wall layer. And then in the master tab, I'm just gonna bring down the saturation and I'm gonna bring down the lightness just a touch and then going to the hue adjustment Adjustment, I'm just going to drag this over until I find a color that kind of matches the other cliff color with the waterfall there. So it's kind of like a yellowish blue color. Next, I'm gonna to go to my other cliff, which is the cliff roof. Click on that, add a hue saturation adjustment, add a clipping mask so it only affects that layer. And once again, I'm just going to bring down that saturation and then adjust the hue as needed just so it fits the vibe of the rest of our photo. Now looking down here at my cliff wall layer, there's a little bit of things that are left over around the edge of the cliff. So just with my brush tool selected, black set to my foreground color, my cliff wall layer mask selected, I'm just gonna paint over those areas just to remove them. And I'm using about a 75% hardness here so then I can make the edge of this cliff wall still look sharp, but while still getting rid of the stuff that was in the background there. Now let's go and work with our person layer, or in this case, the group. So with the person group selected, I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer, 
add a clipping mask. So now we're only going to brighten our person layers. I'm gonna bring up the midtones just a little bit and I'm gonna bring down the shadows a touch there. Then I'll go to the blue tones. I'm gonna to add a bit of blue to the highlights and then maybe just bring down the midtones just a touch so that it doesn't look too overwhelming there. Now I'm also noticing that there is just a little bit of fringing along the grass here. So I'm gonna just click on that person group, add a layer mask, and then I can quickly just mask out the edge of this grass like so. So now we have a general blend of our edit and we can start to go through and stylize things accordingly. So what I actually wanna do is make this waterfall feel a little more blue and airy slash bright looking. So I'm going to go to that waterfall layer, click on that, and then I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer, add a clipping mask, and then I'm just gonna brighten this up a little and play around with the contrast. So bringing up those highlights, maybe lifting the shadows just a touch so it has that soft glowy look. And then I wanna add some blue. So I'll go to the blue hue or blue channel within the curves and I'll drag that up in the highlights. Now I'm gonna do the same type of blending with the cliff wall. So clicking on the cliff wall layer, adding a curves adjustment, I'm going to play around with the contrast, darkening the highlights, bringing up the shadows a little bit, going to the blue color channel. I'll then just add a little bit of blue to that highlight area and then bring it down in the shadows and midtones a little so it's not so blue anymore. That looks good to me. And now these two cliffs are blending really nicely. As for the cliff roof, it doesn't really need a whole lot done to it. So I'm just gonna say that we're happy with where it is. So now that our overall image is blended together, I wanna start going and adding some cool lighting effects within this waterfall. I wanna make a bit of a light glow coming from behind this cliff roof layer. So going below my cliff roof layer here, I'll create a new layer. So it's above my waterfall and above the cliff wall. And I'm gonna call this to glow. Now I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I'm going to select sort of a bluish white color like that. Click OK. I'm gonna scale up my brush and choose a 0% hardness. And then I'll just go and paint along the edge with a 100% opacity. Then I'm gonna set this to 60% opacity by pressing six on my keyboard. And I'm gonna paint along one more time. And I'll go to 30 by pressing three. And then I'll paint one more time going down a little bit further there. So this just creates a nice natural gradient of our color. Now with that selected, I'm gonna change my blending mode from normal down here to soft light or overlay. But in this case, overlay is a little too much. So I'm gonna to go to soft light. And then if you would like, you can adjust the fill slider as needed to further blend in that lighting effect. I might even go and just paint a little bit more blue around the cliff here, just with a low opacity brush. Painting all along the bottom just to add in that blue hue to pretty much the entire background. So turning that on and off, you can see the big difference that that has made to add a bit of a glow slash misty look to our background. Now from there, we can go and edit the color of our subject. So let's go up to our person group, click on that and create a color balance adjustment. And you can just adjust this as needed within the midtones. usually we'll do the trick. In this case, I need to just add maybe a little bit of blue. That looks good to me right there. So I just added a slight bit of cyan, a bit of magenta, and a little bit of blue. Now that our lighting effects are put together, let's group all of our layers and start doing some global adjustments. So clicking on your topmost layer, going down to the bottom most layer, shift clicking it, then pressing Command or Control G to group them. I'm gonna call this group to breakdown. And now we can go and add our global adjustments. Now for global adjustments, I like to add three different adjustment layers. The first one is the curves for brightness and contrast, and then and I'm gonna add a hue saturation adjustment to adjust the hues, and then finally a color balance layer to bring it all together. At the end of that, we'll do a dodge and burn adjustment to finalize our edit. So let's start with our curves adjustment. Clicking on the curves adjustment layer, placing it above the breakdown group. You do not have to clip it to the group because there are no other layers down below. It's just gonna affect everything in the group. So now with the curves adjustment, you can play around with the contrast depending on what kind of style you're into here. I wanna add a bit more contrast into the photo. So just bringing down the shadows and midtones, bringing up the highlights to touch. You can see how that just makes things pop a little bit better. Going to my color channels, I'm gonna to go to the blue one, maybe just increase the blue and the highlight to touch, and then play around with the options in the midtones as well there. So just adding a touch of blue in the midtones and highlights. Then I'll go to the red channel and I'll just add a little bit of cyan to my midtones, and that just adds a nice touch to our edit. Now let's go and add our hue saturation adjustment layer and we're gonna work through all of our different color channels. However, I think most of these are gonna sit within the cyans and blues just because of the tones in our image. Starting with the reds, I'm gonna increase the saturation to 100% and as you can see, this is what's going to be affected. So if you don't really see that much being affected, you can just skip that color channel altogether. But in this case, I actually wanna edit this grass a bit. So I'm gonna bring down that saturation and then maybe just play around with the hue a little just to give it a different 
vibe in the bottom of the image. Next, I'm gonna just skip ahead to the cyans, bring up my saturation so I can see what's going to be affected, then I can adjust the hue to fit your desired look. Next, the blues. This time you can see it's affecting a little more of our image. That looks good to me right in there. And then I will skip the magentas as well. So now with those few adjustments, we've given our photo a bit more of a teal hue and made the grass a bit more green at the bottom. Lastly, we're gonna add a color balance adjustment layer. And then we're going to apply our image to a layer mask by going to image and apply image. This works really well for blending the colors of the color balance adjustment into your photo. With your settings matching mine, as you see here, go ahead and click okay. And then now you have your image applied to a layer mask. Starting in the midtones, you can just play around with all these sliders and see what kind of options it gives you for the looks of your edit. Since I'm kind of favoring those blue and cool tones, that's kind of what I'm still gonna go for with this particular adjustment layer. So just work through the shadows, midtones, and highlights and adjust all of the settings as you wish until you're happy with the overall color profile of your composite image. Turn that on and off. We've just made our photo look a little bit more cool compared to without. So now turning those three adjustments on and off, you can see the big difference that, that has made to just make our photo feel a little bit more complete edit wise. Now the last thing we're gonna do is add a dodge and burn adjustment layer, but not with the dodge and burn tools in Photoshop. We're just gonna go and use a curves adjustment layer just because it's a little bit easier than having to play around with the dodge and burn tools. So clicking on the curves adjustment layer twice, we're gonna call one to dodge and then another one to burn. And then with the burn curves adjustment selected, we're gonna darken that because that's what burning does is darkens. And then we'll click on the layer mask and press Command or Control I to invert it. Then we're gonna to go to the dodge and we're gonna brighten things up a little and then click on the layer mask and press Command or Control I to invert that. Now starting with the dodge layer, we're gonna grab our brush tool, make sure white is set to our foreground color and I'm gonna bring the opacity down to like 30%, but you can play around with this. The lower your brush opacity, the more subtle your brush effects will look when you're doing these dodge and burn adjustments. Now the goal here is to go and paint over anywhere that you want to brighten in your photo. If you paint over the same area twice with a low opacity, it will just make the effect stronger in that area. So for example, if you had a 50% opacity brush, you could paint over the same area twice and then your effects would be fully visible in that particular area. So just going around and painting anywhere that you want the highlight to take place here. That looks good to me there. So now I'm gonna click on the burn adjustment with the same brush settings. This time we're gonna darken everything that we paint over rather than brightening. This is a great way to add some extra contrast into your photo and make any areas that you want to pop, pop even more because you can add darkening beside the highlights so then the highlights pop even more. So I'm gonna go along the outer edges of the waterfall, maybe in some of the cracks of this cliff here. And that looks pretty good to me right there. Now lastly, I'm gonna bring up my brush opacity to like 70 or 80% just by pressing seven on my keyboard and then I'm going to create a nice large brush super soft so 0% hardness and then I'm going to go and paint along the edges of my photo like this just to add a bit of a vignette. So now with that, turning those two dodge and burn adjustments on and off, look at the big difference that that makes just to make our photo feel a little bit more epic and awesome. And with that, we have completed our composite image. So let's check out this before and after. Looking at our before image, you can see that we just had our waterfall that we scaled up, moved it over to fit our composition, but then we went and added our cliff wall, we added the roof to the cave, then we added our subject standing on the rock in the middle, did some blending and all that good stuff, and then suddenly we ended ended up with this image right here, did some cool blending effects, added some light, and now we are finished. So if you followed along and created this composite for yourself, I would love to see how it turned out. So if you upload it to Instagram, make sure to tag me at burnwild so I can check it out and show you some love. Now, photo manipulations on this channel are kind of a new thing, but if you want to see more of them, make sure to let me know down in the comments and also hit that like button so I know that you're enjoying it and that I should make more of these types of videos. If you love Photoshop and photo editing, then of course hit that subscribe button so we can hang out and do more of this stuff together. And with that, my name is Brendan from Be Well Creative and I will catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.